It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Theron and Mary Jo Foley are here. We'll get their reaction to, you know, the big new iPhone announcements. But Tuesday was much more important than that. Patch Tuesday and, of course, uh, the big Destiny release. Lots of news coming up. Windows Phone News 2 as well. From Paul, Mary Jo, and Windows Weekly, next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therott and Mary Jo Foley, episode 379, recorded September 10th, 2014. Snarknado. Windows Weekly is brought to you by ShareFile. Enhance your workflow. Send files of almost any size easily and securely with Citrix ShareFile. Try ShareFile today for a 30-day free trial. Visit ShareFile.com, click the microphone, and enter Windows. And by IT Pro TV. Are you looking to upgrade your IT skills or prepare for certification? IT Pro TV offers engaging and informative tutorials streamed to your Roku, computer, or mobile device. For 30% off the lifetime of your account, go to itpro.tv slash ww and use the code ww30. And by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. For a free two-week trial and 10% off, visit squarespace.com and use the offer code WINDOWS. It's time for Windows Weekly, the show where we cover Windows Weekly every week. And uh, goodness gracious, the that's the name. And uh, mm. what year are we in, Paul? I think we've been doing this since uh, Vista came out, right? So that's... <laughs> I'm not getting into this conversation again. A long time. <laughs> I don't remember. I don't Stop remember. highlighting that I don't remember it's that. Been too long, too long. <laughs> Paul Therott is here at the Super Site for Windows, winsupersite.com, author of a great many books on all sorts of subjects, including the Delphi 3 Super Bible. Also with us, Mary Jo Foley at allaboutmicrosoft.com. Good to see you both. You too. Welcome to the program. Uh... I don't, I hate, I guess, there's really big news this week, and I think we really should start off with that. Big day yesterday, right? Yeah. Talking about Patch Very Tuesday? Good. Patch Tuesday, yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Patch Tuesday, a big one. <laughs> don't you feel sorry for anybody, unless you're unless like accused of something really horrific crime you want to announce it on uh, actually you know what i you know all joking aside we should and talk about the important apple news from yesterday which of course was the killing of the ipod classic yeah mm -hmm. i th i thought that would happen a long time ago that's why i bought an ipod classic like a couple of years ago, or last year even because i yeah. i felt i felt like this this can't serve this can't last i know that's it's like someone didn't notice one. it was there yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah they forgot to kill it that's why we've got it right here. And anybody that wants to buy it, clicking it sound it makes like Texas is silent, yeah. songs. Yeah. No, you know what? I bought one for my car because I wanted to have the maximum storage yeah. in my car. And it's 128 gigs of music in my car. It's great. Sure. Hard to it's fill it. Or is it 128? 128, 128 gigs. Oh, no, you're right. It is more. 160. Yeah, there you wow. go. Okay. <laughs> wow. But they do have a yep. 128 gig iPad and 128 gig phone now. So I know. What do you need mm -hmm. this for anymore? Um, music is so 2000s, Leo. Mm -hmm. I don't... Uh, so, so, I'm doing a survey. Yeah. <laughs> let me knock on your door. Mr. Right. Mr. Therat, Ms. Foley. Oh, hold on. Let me, let me give you the actual answer I would give you if you did come to my door. <laughs> yeah. Stephanie, it's for you. <laughs> Mrs. Therat, I have a question. Do you still store stuff on your phone? How much storage are you... Let me take your phone out right now and tell me how much you've used. Because right, right, right. I buy now... I, don't, I, I buy 16 gig phones because I never put anything on the phone. It's all streaming. Mm -hmm. See, I, right. I was just thinking that. I, I partition things and... Um, I do put mus some music uh, on the phone, and I put a couple of audiobooks, that kind of thing. But I'm not going to put videos on the phone. No. Uh, so you don't really need a lot of storage. I'd feel more comfortable with 32, but... Yeah, the 16 is uh, probably a little uh, light, but... 16 plus micro SD, you know, right. perfect. Right, I'm using 5 gigs out of um, 20, no, out of 30. My point exactly. Yep. My point exactly. Not much. So, but I, I mean, there are people still, and every time I say this, who uh, who say to me, oh, 
um, you know, you need uh, you need to have much more room. I I put video. <laughs> I, I need more room on my tablet. Yeah. Than yeah, anything. Maybe. And the reason is, you know, for work purposes on a laptop, it's just a couple of applications, some data synced from OneDrive, and I don't have any entertainment on there at all. But where I want the space is for HD video on a tablet. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So I don't really need a lot of space on a laptop. 120 gigs is great, um, you know, SSD. And then on a phone, you know, uh, these days, depends on the phone, 32 with no expansion, 16 plus expansion is fine. You know, I was thinking uh, the other day, <clears throat> Microsoft is doing this exactly right. Google releases glasses. Microsoft says, we have them, but doesn't release them. Then when Google Glass is a complete <laughs> flop, they go, well, we see. Yeah, see what it, see? <laughs> Microsoft, Apple announced, well, Apple never announced anything, but everybody assumed Apple's going to do a watch. So Microsoft says, oh, we got one, but doesn't release it. And then Apple well, comes that's out. That's coming soon, Leo. Is it, you think? Yeah. Yeah. I know. Yeah. It's, you know... Yeah, I got should, a lot of people tweeting that. me this. Is that is that the watch you're talking about? The <laughs> the Zune yeah, that's watch? an awesome watch. <laughs> that would be something I could do with my Zune. I still have my Zune HD. I'd like to use it for something. <laughs> I like. You know, the there HD. was a Zune, uh, like a small Zune. They mm -hmm. should use one of those. But I appreciate him yeah. using an original brown Zune. Yeah, <laughs> a little Zune. Especially brown. Yeah. Yeah. Um. All right. Well, let's talk. Let's talk about. Uh, yeah. Do you have anything to say about what <laughs> about what Apple announced? I went shopping yesterday and I didn't watch the announcement. <laughs> oh I my actually... God! Now this is uh, a political thing for you. Like I no no because look. you know what I knew at the end I could just read a few stories yeah. and see what happened. I wasn't like waiting with bated breath because I don't cover Apple. Right. You know what's funny is there was a um, for the first twenty minutes of their live stream, which we were covering because of course oh, it was brutal. <laughs> there was Chinese translation <laughs> oh, was going on the whole time. Somebody yeah, was I have talking never in seen a stream mishandled like that. I, I it was the the quality was terrible. It dropped out. It, cra it cracked. I tried to watch it on Apple TV. I actually moved my Apple TV in my office, put it on this. Yeah, because you had to use you couldn't watch it on Windows, right? Uh, I don't no. even know. I didn't even try. No. I just no, wanted you had to, to use Safa Safari. Safari right? You had to use an yeah. Apple product. Okay. I didn't. Okay, that didn't factor into my decision. But I, I had to unplug it twice to reboot it. It literally crashed the thing to what? the point where it wouldn't respond to the crashed remote. Your Apple twice. TV. Twice. Yes. Uh, and it was that was so lousy. Granted, I, I listen. Everybody on Earth who has an internet connection was list, watching this thing basically. But uh, it astonishes me that a couple of a Apple's technical prowess couldn't, you know, figure this kind of thing out. You know. Uh, there's an article which is everybody's been sharing from a guy we've we've had on Twitter before, Dan Rayburn. He's a streaming media mm -hmm. guru. And he said it's actually Apple's fault. It wasn't that so many people were watching. Apple didn't let Akamai cash it with the way they had designed their page. They made, like, beginner mistakes. All well, yeah, time. they never, I mean, they don't really do live streaming of events very often. Well, now we right. know why. <laughs> you know, the funny well, thing I is they do the iTunes Festival brilliantly. That yeah, thing no, goes was, off without a hitch so all September. So and I'm thinking that's a, that was probably a third-party team, and they should just bring those guys in. Because, <laughs> frankly... You know, sometimes um, when you watch a movie, it's so horrible that it becomes funny. Yeah, this wasn't that. And fun. But sometimes they're so horrible. They're just horrible. Yeah. They're just painful. And that's what this was like. It was just... It wasn't even funny. It was awful how terrible it was. Yeah. So I'll watch it again, you know, without the Chinese, hopefully, or Japanese or whatever <laughs> it was. But... You know, I'll, what I, I will maybe couch a few of the things that they did in the context of, of what Microsoft is doing and what the rest of the industry is doing. I mean, obviously, from the cynical Microsoft perspective, a lot of people will look at this stuff and say, wow, the new iPhone 6 looks a lot like the Lumia 20, uh, 925. Um, wow, they've reinvented NFC mobile payments, which Windows Phone added two years ago, although it went absolutely nowhere, um, et cetera, et cetera. There's all that kind of stuff. But Honestly, some of the stuff about the iPhone is actually going to help Windows Phone, I think. So for mobile payments being the biggest one, Apple has the market power to get all of the major credit card companies and banks, retail uh, stores, restaurants on board. And that will open up NFC mobile payments, which, by the way, have been around for years, to everybody, to Android, to Windows Phone, et cetera. And I think Apple, by pushing this thing through and making it happen, that will actually benefit everyone, including people who don't ultimately decide to buy an iPhone. And so I think that's, I think that's really cool. Yeah, the I, watch I, don't care about. Yeah, 
I, I you know, um, Apple's got a lot of clout in the market. So yeah. Apple not supporting NFC, you know, kind of means it's a, it's on hold until Apple does. I'm surprised they did, frankly. I mean, sort of. I mean, you know, remember Android had it. I mean, you know, uh, no, Samsung. It, it's been on NFC. everything except. I, by the way, I, I had an, an instance this uh, summer when I was in Barcelona where before I got my, um, you know, in-country SIM kind of thing figured out, I, I wasn't able to get online with the phone that had the I was taking pictures with. And so I did a an NFC share where you bump the two phones together and it went from Windows phone to Android. The Android phone was the one I could get online with and I was able to share a photo, you know, by virtue of the fact that they both of them had NFC. And um, I, I obviously, I'm sure the transfer occurred over Bluetooth or whatever, but the point was they both had NFC do that kind of fun bump thing and it, wor it worked, like it actually worked. And, um, you know, that doesn't happen a lot. But I can assure you, now that these Apple guys have it, you're going to see guys doing wrist bumps all the time with their yeah. stupid watches. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> like, 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 you know this is going to happen. But our, it, look, it, people are going to say, well, of course Paul doesn't like it. And he's a Windows guy. He's, you know, and, and I think a lot of people, uh -huh. Android people said, oh, it's just, you know, it's just a Me Too thing from Apple. Everybody. No, I have an Android watch. I don't like that either. I, that's why I don't <laughs> think the Apple watch is that interesting. I, I yeah. I've used a smartwatch recently. I, they didn't, as far as the smartwatch goes, I don't think they announced, showed anything that was particularly different from what's available on Android. It's Apple, so you know the devices will be beautiful, and you know the software will be elegant, and I know that I don't want to watch. <laughs> so right. whatever. Yeah. I mean, um, at some point in the future, you know, a year from now when Watch 2 comes out or two years from now when Watch 3 comes out, you'll see some innovations that make these things a little more desirable. They'll get smaller and thinner. Yeah. They, they won't be as dependent on an iPhone. They'll be independent. You know, remember when iOS or iPhone or iPad or whatever it was, the moment where this doesn't require a PC tethering. It was like, this is just now a standalone device. That makes something like that much more useful. And I think that that's where watch heads. You know, until then, it's, it's a curiosity. Um, but I just, you know, I, I think for people who are going to work out and stuff, these things will become interesting. I'm uh, curious to see if Apple has the clout, and I bet they do, to get the carriers in line. Because remember, even though Google Wallet's been out for a while, Verizon wouldn't put it on the phones, for instance, because yeah. they had their own wallet, ISIS. The, well, the wallet that was the other end run ISIS. that Apple did, right? So <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. the way that Microsoft implemented wireless payments was the secure element was on the SIM which means you need the wireless carrier to work with you, which uh, means, by the way, that none of them did, except right. for one, supposedly, although I'm not even sure that ever happened, which was uh, Orange in France. And so for the past two years, no one has ever come on board again to, right. to do mobile payments on Windows Phone. Um, my understanding, again, this is hard, it's hard to tell because the way Apple does things and announces things, it's not always clear. But I, the way I took it was the secure element in iPhone 6 is in the phone. Yeah. And someone just told me via email or via comments, perhaps, that uh, uh, KitKat enabled this functionality as well. Because, you know, frankly, when you want to do great things on a wireless network, the first thing you need to do is bypass, bypass the carrier, right? Because yeah. those guys hold everything. Oh, back. yeah. Yeah, yeah. What a surprise. Verizon doesn't want to use the uh, Google wallet. What a shock. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> um, yeah. I mean, we I don't know. The problem with the, these watches to me, and I'm somebody who actually does wear a regular watch still, is um, they they don't really do anything much that the phone can't do. So why not just use your phone? And I know people say, oh, you have to take it out of your pocket, more intrusive. But until you know what, they are really complementary to the phone, I don't want one. You're actually more right than you may realize because in Thank my you, experience, sir. at least with the, with the Android. <laughs> well, no, I mean, you're right, but you're also right on a different level because – in my experience with the Android Wear uh, watch, I would say not nine times out of ten, but seven or eight times out of ten, when the, you see something on the watch or, or go or something happen, you get a notification, you look at it, it says, uh, go to the phone. Right. <laughs> you know, okay. and I'm sorry, but that's <laughs> right. worthless. The other yeah. thing is, you know, I, I wear a Fitbit, and um, this is like the Kindle of, of wearables. It doesn't get a day of battery life. It doesn't get two days of battery life. It gets weeks of battery life. Yeah. Every once in a while, I feel weird about it. Like, I'll just plug it into the charger to see because it's been like 10 days. And it's like, nope, 36% used. That's it. Yeah, but you, <laughs> you, charge, know? you charge your phone every day. What's the big deal? You just put your watch and phone next to each other on the bed. Yeah, we're not robots. We're going to like take off all these electronics and plug them into different outlets everywhere. I, mean, I already do yeah. that. So I don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, but this, is, but this is yet another thing to plug in and, and manage yourself. And. Les Mary Jo just said, and she's right, 
it doesn't really add a super amount of extra value over what you're already getting from the other devices you're already charging. A Fitbit is where I see a wearable making more sense. Um, but this yeah. does, but all watches at least do the pedometer. I mean, that's not. Yeah, right. I mean, but, this thing, but like I said, though, this yeah. is smaller and it lasts for two weeks almost in a charge. Right. 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 And wasn't the last rumor we heard the the supposed Microsoft watch was more like a Fitbit, right? And it, it was right. less like and, a yeah. Pebble or something like that. So I, I actually thought, OK, if it's like that and you say bundle it maybe with the Xbox and have some kind of a tie in that way, then I then that to me makes more sense than a watch that does exactly what my phone does. OK. Plus, I, I think my Fitbit is giving me mercury poisoning or something. It's really excellent. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this kind of weird rash that I have. No, that's that. Is that the nickel? Oh, oh no, that was the. Uh, that, oh, was no, a different I, I, one. that is the one I have. I don't that's actually have that problem. Yeah. yeah, I know that's a problem. Um, well, um, OK. I mean, I'm a, I'm a fan of uh, watches. I like uh, but I agree that they're not a necessity. They're a luxury. They're a an add on. Yeah. Much, and much, I don't think they ever become anything other than an add-on, but yeah. I do think they get more useful over time. So what yeah. can We're, Microsoft is, do? Early they're watching this, and they're they're looking, and they're assessing. They they're in a somewhat of an advantage because no, you know, they're the last to the table at this point. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can tell you two things right off the top of the bat that they can do, and I, one of them I know they are doing. The first one is cross-platform compatibility. When you yep. buy an Android watch, it's Android. Yes. It, if you buy an Apple watch, it's Apple, and you're locked in to those ecosystems. The Microsoft one will be cross-platform. You know, this is the new mobile first cloud first thing. Like the Pebble. The uh, Pebble, the Pebble's so. the only cross-platform one I know of. It works on okay. Apple and Android. Yeah, and, and the other one is just... Um, you know, this, this is ironic, because in the old days, Apple always had to work with Windows because it, 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 mm -hmm. it, you were the small one. And you had yep. to work with the big guy, and now Microsoft's in that position exactly. Uh, they have to be compatible because nobody's going to yep. buy one that will just work with a Windows phone. Right. It's small enough. Yeah. The watch sure, market, sure. market is a fraction of the phone market already. You don't want to make yep. it, make it. Mm -hmm. you know, what's the fraction of 4%? I mean, come on. Yep. So uh, it makes sense. They have to be multi-platform. Yep. Uh, multi yeah. Yeah. But I, oh, I know Paul, Paul had heard October maybe, right? Oh, really? October, yeah. I was going to say, though, real quick, though, the, the second thing they could do that I think would be uh, attractive to a lot of people, and, I, and they are doing, is it's going to be more like a band and less like a watch. In other words, you're not going to get that big smart. circular yeah. chunk. It's going to be yeah. more like um, the Samsung, whatever that one yeah. is called. You know what band. happens with an Apple announcement? It's really kind of interesting, is that everybody, and I'm, I'm, I have to say, I, I, I was, I'm suckered by this a little bit, too says, all right, we've seen the... Re it happened with MP3s, it happened with smartphones. We thought it was going to happen with watches. We've seen everybody throw stuff against the wall. Now, let's see how Apple reinvents the category. Mm -hmm. And you know what? This time, I don't <laughs> think they did. I don't... I don't think yeah. so either. Yeah. I don't think yeah. there's anything in this new watch that makes me go, oh, finally, they mm -hmm. fixed that. By the way, uh, I, I don't doubt that they will have the best-selling smartwatch um, by virtue of the oh, fact yeah. that their ecosystem is full of um, people oh, like to spend it. money. I'll and buy it. Yeah, I mean, of hills, You know, people. Mm -hmm. And because it works with the iPhone, which is uh, very popular in the, right. you know, the kind of rich markets where these types of devices would tend to sell better. And so, um, and I think you're right. You were mentioning before the show, um, uh, I think China and Japan uh, and certain markets uh, where they perceive they get, you know, they see value. Like the reason Apple has a gold version of the iPhone, you know, in certain markets, that's, you know, yep. people love that stuff. And mm -hmm. I think it attracts that same crowd. Yeah. yeah. You know, I think I think the thing on Microsoft that we have to think about is what is the unique or the value add thing that they bring that the other people don't have, right? So if sure. they just field a watch that does everything that a Pebble does or the Apple Watch, okay, they're they're not really playing to their strengths. So the trick for us, I think, is to think about what are they going to make it tie to or have uniquely that the other watches don't have. And I'm betting Xbox tie-in is one thing. Um, mm. Johan uh, Van Melia Mirlo, our friend... Uh, who does some stuff around peripherals for Windows Phone? He he's like maybe they'll put those new uh, MSN branded apps on the on the Windows Watch or whatever it gets called. Right? That makes things. sense. Sure. Yep. Um, but you know the one thing I heard this week from a couple of my contacts is we we might see kind of a uh, more circumspect launch on on this uh, Windows Watch kind of a thing. Like maybe a very much smaller launch. 
targeted at a very specific segment of the market instead of here's our watch and it's meant for everybody. I think they're going to try to, that's why I'm guessing the Xbox tie-in, Xbox fitness. Right? Would, I would have guessed health and fitness if they were going to yeah, do that. Yeah, health and fitness. Yeah. 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 So I think they're going to do something smaller, more targeted. Right. Um, and you know, just like they did with the Surface Mini where they took a step back and said, you know what? We have a product ready, but that's not the right product. Yeah. I think they may have made some watches and said, yeah. you know what? We don't have enough value add here and we got to rethink what we're going to do for this product. Jeez. It's going to get mini. What if they put, yeah. what if they, what if it were like mostly a Skype watch with just a camera and a picture and you just Skyped with it? Sure. Yeah. I'd love that. Also, it could control your Xbox, you know, for those uh, yeah, people that don't have watch a can be used can as, use as a remote as a control. Tim, Tim Cook said it, it will work control yeah. your Apple TV. That is a good use for it. Yeah. Does the Xbox, yeah, smart glass works through the Wi Fi. So, yeah. In fact, that worked great yesterday. Because really, the big story of September 9th was Destiny. And I forgot. I went to work and I forgot. Oh, crap. I did the same thing yeah. before. So I fire up Smart Glass and I buy Destiny on my phone. And it starts downloading my Xbox One. So when I get home, I'm ready to play it. That's nice. I do like that, yeah. I love that. Yeah. Mary Jo, you don't have to say yep. I, yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I know you this. don't well, that, Okay, let's put this in terms of Windows. Let's say right, Windows exactly. 9 is going to ship yep. on April 15th, 2015, ah, just to make yep. date. Oh, that's a What good if point. Microsoft yeah. preloaded your PC with this thing so that on that day it would just kick off the installer and you'd wake up and have Windows 9? You've got 9. That would be interesting. And that's that whole click to run thing they do with Office now, right? While you're sure. downloading Office, you can start using parts of it as it finishes downloading. So they've, they've got that technology. Yeah. They could do that. Yeah, that's interesting. Ah. That's one way to make everybody buy the new version. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, we're going to take a break. A big story broke yesterday as well. It's bad Patch timing. Tuesday. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Patch Tuesday. <laughs> no, it's bad timing. You really, there is no oxygen in the environment for anything during an Apple uh, launch, but. There isn't anyone there to report it. Yeah, everybody's <laughs> busy know? in Cupertino. Even if it happened. Yeah. Um, uh, I, this is a weird story. Microsoft, uh, Microsoft and Mojang? We'll talk yeah. about that in just a second. But first, a word from sharefile.com, secure file storage and sharing. We don't really mention the storage aspect of this, but it's absolutely true. Sharefile, I synchronize my Sharefile folders on my desktop with the Sharefile cloud. And then all the files I want to share are available uh, on my smartphone, on my tablet, anytime I want it. Sharefile, Citrix, I really should call it Citrix Sharefile. That's the official name. And I think that's something good to keep in mind. It's from Citrix, and you know Citrix knows business. Uh, it is uh, designed to eliminate the bane of every security and IT guy in the world, email attachments. Don't send email attachments. That's a great way to spread viruses. It's insecure. The file you're sending, I don't care what disclaimers you put under that email signature, that is not, that is not private. And frankly, nowadays with the big files we're sending, the presentations, the big PDFs, the contracts and so forth, bounce backs is a, a real problem. Sharefile eliminates all of these problems very simply, very elegantly. Instead of sending an attachment, you're sending a secure link to Sharefile. In fact, I'll show you what I, I can actually do this because I use Sharefile. I use it every week. I'm going to use it today. Wednesday is my big Sharefile day. Once I log into my Sharefile account, you'll see that because it's automatically synchronizing, all the files that I've recorded are there. This is the folder for the radio network. You see, I have other folders as well. And uh, all of the management's done for me. So if I want to send a file, here's a spot that I have to send off to the radio stations before the show on Saturday. I check that box. Now, you could do this with an Outlook plugin. So if you're using Outlook, it's even easier than this. It looks just like an attachment. But this is the web interface. With the web interface, you can create the email yourself or say, just give me a link. Now, notice some of the settings here that are really useful. Email me when the item's been downloaded. Require recipients to enter name and email before downloading. When the uh, access expires, anything from a day, a week, a month, to six months, a year. I usually say never. But let, you know, may, let's say I'm sending them an ad that it really is only good for a week. I could say, hey, that's good for a week. Uh, you could say how many times they can download it. <laughs> let's be really mean. You can only try download it once. <laughs> now, what I'm going to get, you'll see here, is a secure HTTPS link. And I, if I paste it in, you'll see what they're going to do. So they'll, I put that link in the email. They click the link, and they get a branded page. It's got my my branding on it, which is great. 
Doesn't it, it looks like a it came from me. Big button. They don't have to sign up for anything. All they do is click the download link. They even know they're getting a WAV file. They know how big it is. And you know, this 10 megabyte file, that would be a bounce back on a lot of email systems. I know it seems so small, but that would be a bounce. Never bounce. No one can see this along the way. It's totally secure. It's share file, and it's really the best way to share file in business. Share files in business. I want you to try it free for 30 days. If in your business, if you're an IT director or, or a CIO, or if you're not, to give it to your IT director or CIO. 99% of the Fortune 500 companies use it. That means, let me, let me think that. Think about that. That means 495 out of the 500 use it. I wonder who the five who don't use it are. <laughs> Sharefile. Five companies in the Fortune 500 have yet to sign up. If you're one of them, would you do me a favor? Sign up. And in fact, do me a huge favor. When you do it, click the podcast listeners button at the top of the page and enter the offer code Windows. And then Paul and Mary Jo will get the benefit of Chevron signing up for a share file. <laughs> Windows is the offer code. Choose your industry, too, because it's HIPAA compliant in the medical industry. It satisfies SEC regulations in the financial services industry. Everything from video, real estate, recruiting, legal, marketing. Yeah, if you're a lawyer... Are you actually sending contracts and files and pleadings through the mail? That's nuts. Use ShareFile today. Use the offer code Windows for 30 days absolutely free. Paul Therott, Mary Jo Foley, we're talking Winders. This was a big story that crossed the wire, from, and it's from the Wall Street Journal, so I think there's yep. some credibility. Mojang, which is a small company, about 40 people, up there in uh, the frozen north. Where is it, Sweden? Stockholm. Stockholm. Yeah. Uh, and they make a little thing called Minecraft. <laughs> Apparently, Microsoft's been negotiating not not it's for some time, right? It's been going on for a while. Can yeah. someone tell me why, though? Mary Jo okay. is going to tell us why. I will. I will tell you why. And I saw so many people on Twitter saying, wow, this is idiotic. And if you notice Microsoft's stock price today, it was up. So there are oh. people who don't think it's idiotic. The market likes it. Um, I think it makes sense for a couple reasons. So one, it gives them a way to spend some of their offshore cash, right? Two billion supposedly is the uh, price. And the last time they did this was when they bought Nokia for seven point two billion. They want to use that cash yeah. that they have off offshore. Yeah, um, so that's secondly, a really important point because if they were is. to repatriate that cash, they'd pay U.S. taxes on it. That's I right. will take some of it and move to Europe. I don't understand yeah, the problem. Yeah, me too. Me too. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah, why not? Right. Why and, not? Then, you know, I saw people saying, oh, yeah, but why are they going to do this? You know, like they're getting out of gaming, right? Like they should just sell right. off the Xbox. And you know what? Satya Nadella made a point when he put his memo out in July about what are our priorities. He said that, that a big priority for Microsoft is building out the digital life category. Mm. Biggest group of technologies in there, gaming. Games and gaming. Mm. So he wants to stay in that market. He, even if they someday get out of Xbox, which I don't I don't see them doing anytime soon, if ever, um, they're, they want to stay in gaming. Uh, gaming on PC, gaming on phone, gaming on Xbox. And this plays obviously right into that as well. And, you know, I, I've got a nephew who's so, so into Minecraft. And I think people who haven't seen Minecraft think, oh, it's just a video game. It's just another kind of game, except you don't shoot people. Um, <laughs> not Sounds not a joke at you, Paul. What are you talking about? I know. <laughs> anybody, anybody who has kids between the ages yep. of eight and fourteen, and I know you have nephews. Yeah. Knows. I told him my Minecraft story. Surely, <laughs> I, mean, I, 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 I heard music like weird music coming down from upstairs one time. This about probably a year ago now, but so I, I kind of walked upstairs to find out what is the sound I'm hearing, and it's coming off my son's oh, screen. He's oh, playing this crazy oh, looking eight bit oh. looking game. So I'm watching this thing, and I'm like, what is this? And he describes it to me, and I'm like, I don't understand. Do you shoot things? Do you make, you know, is it like a map editor? So then you go in and blow stuff up, and he's like, no. Nope. And as he is talking to me, this character goes flying by in space and on the screen. And I said, well, who was that? And he said, oh, that's my cousin Harrison. He says, uh, yeah, he's in here checking out my thing and helping me uh, with this. And I'm like, you know what? Have fun. <laughs> this, uh, yeah. this seems really healthy and normal. And, I will describe okay. it in a way that you will get. Parents will get. Uh, adults of our generation, well, my generation and yours will get. It's mm -hmm. Lego. It's yeah. Lego for this generation. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yep. sure. So, and, and it's Lego. They can play with their friends and family and even strangers all around the world at the same time. They can build things. 
Um, I, you know, when I first played with Minecraft very early on, I thought, this is weird. It's 8-bit yeah. graphics. We, we can mm -hmm. do better. Yeah, what's the point? You know? But, for, but right. that is right. for part of its major appeal. Anyway, yeah. that's yeah. neither here nor there. No one's arguing the popularity of Minecraft. All right, but no. uh, so what are the reasons here? Mary Jo said Microsoft has a lot of money overseas and needs to spend it. <laughs> so, but I they mean... Wanna, they want to get more, even more into gaming. And okay. they also want to capture that group of people who are the next generation of coders. I saw Simon Bisson on Site World write about this today. And he's so right. It, you know, Microsoft wants to get into that group and kind of get them thinking about Microsoft as being cool and not Microsoft as being a dinosaur, right? So how do you do that? You own a brand that is really important to that group. It's teaching them how to think about building things. And that's what you want. Those are the people who are going to be the next generation of coders. And by the way, <laughs> let's not forget, and you know, Steve Ballmer made this point when he bought the Clippers. I'm going to make money on this. This is a profitable company. They, they're yep. they're going to make their money back. All right, but the wrinkle here is that Minecraft's creator hates Microsoft. I'm right. sure With Notch a burning, will quit. Burning hate. No, I'm sure Notch will yep. quit. But they don't need Notch. Notch hasn't done anything in Minecraft in years. All he's right. doing is floating around in his boat and yep. <laughs> drinking champagne. And yep. No, Notch is not right in Minecraft anymore. Right. It's and gone well uh, beyond that. Yeah, Bloomberg had a story, uh, a follow-up on this, and they said... They talked to people at Microsoft who said, yeah, if we get them, um, they, they actually said that Notch had talked to Microsoft and had been involved in conversations and that it was accepted that it, if and when Microsoft buys them, he will leave. Because you so know what? That, he also owns like 80 percent of the company. He's right. going sure. to be a billionaire yeah, yeah. even if he wanted to with all his heart. <laughs> What, yeah. You got a billion dollars. Are you going to stay, yeah. go to the office right. every day and, and sit in front of a computer writing yeah. code? No. Right. That's what Dr. Dre's doing, Leo. <laughs> Although people do <laughs> we it. We don't know what Dr. Dre's doing. All we know is he was not at the Apple event yesterday. That's right. all we know. That's just, he was uh, with yeah. me. He was shopping with me. <laughs> and by the way, um, Xbox One's getting Minecraft real soon now. I saw it. Yep. Yeah. And Xbox has had it for years. Will it be remastered? Maybe. Uh, I noticed Michael plays a lot of Minecraft on a PC because, you know, it's a Java program. You can play it on Mac, PC. Mm -hmm. But I also yep. see him play it on the Xbox a lot. And when he's playing with friends, he's almost always on the Xbox, using Xbox Live. This is good yep. business. I don't think there's – it's like saying we're going to – people saying, why do they buy Bungie? Because mm -hmm. it's uh, a well, no, well, that, that made sense because those guys, you know, th that became an Xbox premier title, you know. Um this one, it's not as weird as Facebook buying Oculus Rift, but it's it's weird. I mean, it, it, it's it's yeah. maybe it's just, it just doesn't what if, seem right. All right, you know? Paul, recontextualize. By the way, Minecraft is out on the Xbox One already. Okay. Oh, yeah, what okay. if there's special in-game content that is only available on an yep. Xbox One? Yep. Oh, sure. How many sure. more or Xboxes you, do they sell? Or what if you sell things like they do now, how they have the add-on packs? What if you yep. sell that as a subscription? Yep. Oh, it, it promotes Xbox Live. It promotes Xbox yep. One. I can't believe I'm talking about gaming on Windows Weekly. This <laughs> is a first. No, more than that. You're convincing Paul <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. that a gaming company is a worthwhile purchase. About the benefit of a game. Yeah. <laughs> but can you shoot things? Yeah, you no. can. There's a, No, there's a little... Oh, yeah. no. Oh, no, no, no. You've got... You've got... Yeah. Uh, you've got uh, what do they call them in the night? The creatures that come in the night? The creatures. What is there are zombies, zombies actually, but there's zombies. also uh, there's another group gru gru gruels. I don't know. I you could tell I don't play a lot of Minecraft, but people are doing some amazing creepers. Thank you, creepers. People are doing a lot of amazing stuff in Minecraft, yeah. and I think hmm. this is a franchise. If you, Paul, you'd never you'd never say anything weird if they went out and bought some other game franchise company and said, you know, here we're making part of Microsoft Studio. No, that's fair. I, I think the the problem is the disconnect between the simplicity. Of Minecraft and the graphical yeah, and processing yeah, prowess of it. the Xbox. Yeah. yeah, but that's the appeal for some reason. I don't get it either. But. Oh no, I get it. I'm just you know, Minecraft is a is a game that would be easy to implement on a, a smartphone. Yeah, you know, yeah. on a very low end platform. That's because Not yeah. Notch did basically write it himself. I mean, mm -hmm. and as a kid, no, no, I don't uh, think there are thought popular it'd be a Xbox indie games like uh, you know uh, that what was that Meat Game. Um, Super Meat Boy or whatever, and you know they have really kind of eight bitty type graphics, which are fine. They're fun. There's nothing wrong. You know that's that kind of thing's yeah. fine. I mean, and I know Minecraft is a phenomenon. It's just that you know 
we're moving forward with uh, like Call of Duty games that have the budget and special effects of a major Hollywood movie every single year. And it's like, boop, boop, boop. you know, this game is like it's, the biggest thing in the world. It's, it's fascinating. It's the antidote to that, you know, yeah. big stuff. And the, you know, sure. uh, I, I, I wonder, because I have a lot of nieces who do Minecraft too, and um, it's a way to get girls into this stuff. Yes, girls right? love it. I mean, not all the girls. Some girls want to do shooter games. Not everybody does. Um, but building stuff, building yep. building cities, yeah, yep. they want to do it. Michael, who's 11, plays with his 11-year-old friend, uh, Bridget. They love it. They play together. She's yep. at home. He's at home. They're on the Xbox. They're talking because you have the Xbox Live and the microphone. It's their social. Yep. They have yep. a play date online. Yep. Right. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, it, it, if anything... That is like Facebook for kids, right? Yeah. In the sense that the reason Facebook is so cool to me is that it allows me to keep up with friends and cousins and other people that I know who aren't nearby. I don't see every day, but yet I get, you know, to have an understanding of what's going on in their lives. And like, this I is mean, a way for this, is, this is not an, un, in, in, this, in fact, well, I'm wondering why they didn't buy Twitch. Did you think Microsoft was bidding for Twitch? Amazon yeah, got I it. bet they were. I bet they were. Mm -hmm. um, it's interesting. I mean, it, it, it does run counter to the notion that they might be trying to spin off Xbox. It does to me. Although my when my boss at ZDNet saw that rumor come across, he's like, "Well, they're beefing up the Xbox unit so they can sell it off." Oh, but the, but I don't I don't see it that way because uh, they've been really clear that they're not doing that. I know. I, and Wall Street wants them to dump the console, not necessarily the service, right? And and so this is more a buy to build up the service than it is the console itself. Yeah. So yeah. I'm just trying and to And then get... there's Hadoop. Guys, there's Hadoop, too. I'm <laughs> in, sure. Is there a Hadoop? In... I bet there's going to be Hadoop some. Hadoop tie into weird, Minecraft? You know, Azure connection, you know, hosting Minecraft on Azure, using big data to process the results. Who knows? Paul, just think of all wow. the great, um, you know, Photoshop pictures you're going to be able to post on your blog from now on. <laughs> weird Minecraft mashups. Right. <laughs> you're just going to have so much fun. Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Enough, <laughs> enough of that. It isn't. It's just a rumor, but it did come from the uh, Wall Street Journal, which gives yeah. it a little I bit. Think, of, I think I bet it's going to happen, especially so? Bloomberg's hearing it too. Yeah. And um, yeah. Although so. we thought for sure, I mean, it was more than rumor. Google, mm -hmm. YouTube buying Twitch, no doubt about it. Yep. And true. then something went wrong in the uh, final due diligence, and uh, boom, Amazon's got them. Yep. So yep. that, but they're in play. Mm -hmm. I, th I, you know, I don't think they were in play. I think uh, I don't think Notch really wanted to sell Minecraft, but I think along comes a guy with a two billion dollar check, and he's going, well, yeah, I, yeah. I was gonna say I don't care what you want to sell or not sell. When someone shows up offering two billion dollars for anything, <laughs> yeah. you give it to him. Yep. MSN. I got an email the other day oh, from somebody who said, uh, you know, I you keep recommending LastPass, but you know it doesn't work in MSN, and it's like, what? You're like, using what? <laughs> I don't MSN. like to use a browser. I want to use MSN for my internet. Is MSN, MSN still software? Yeah. Oh, by the way, you can still download that right now. It's still around. Yeah. I don't think anyone's using it per se. Well, no, this guy was. Right. I mean, I'm sure there's a handful of people. But yeah, you can find the software still if you want it. Yeah. But well, that's not what really, that's not what MSN is. What is MSN? Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's a good question, Leo. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, Especially after this week, it's a good question. Yeah, I mean, Emerson has evolved or devolved or however you want to say it over the years. I mean, it's obviously, it started out as the Microsoft Network, which was Microsoft's online service to take on AOL and CompuServe and so forth uh, back in the Windows 95 days. Um, it briefly was a sort of ISP type thing. Um, it was a content service. For, you know, remember Mungo Park and all those crazy things? Actually, Microsoft still does some things like that. So um, what was Mungo Park? It was an interactive website where people were actually going someplace, and I think it was in Africa, and then they were doing interactive things on the web. You know, way before that kind of thing was super easy to do, um, like we can do now. But it became it became over time the predecessor to Windows Live, meaning the part of Microsoft that did their online services and their online applications like uh, Messenger. So Messenger started out as well, probably Windows Messenger, but it was MSN Messenger became Windows Live Messenger over time. Uh, but then they went with the Windows Live brand. You know, they wanted to bring it back into the Windows fold. And at, at that time, I think that's where MSN started listing a little bit. And MSN at that point became a Netscape-style web portal um, or like an AOL-style web portal where if you go to msn.com, what you get is a 
you know, news, celebrity news, weather, you know, that kind of stuff. And you can sign in with your Microsoft account and whatever. But to us here in the United States, you know, MSN is a brand from the past. But what we don't really understand is that in certain parts of the world, for whatever reason, MSN is, in fact, pretty popular. In fact, it's in the top web of uh, top uh, 10 of web destinations in many countries. And I think the figure that Microsoft gave me, if I remember correctly, was somewhere north of 430 million active users of this web portal. And it's probably people oh. just have it as their homepage and, you know, whatever. But um, so to everyone's surprise, uh, Microsoft this past week announced that they are rebranding some of their products and services that used to be under Bing as MSN products and services. And so, for example, we've talked a lot in this podcast, I think, about the incredible Bing content apps that were part first of uh, Windows 8, and then now we're part of Windows 8.1 and Windows Phone 8.1. Uh, Bing News, you know, Bing Sports, Bing Travel, Bing Health and Fitness, uh, Bing Food and Drink. I'm missing a few here. Bing Weather, maybe more. Finance, uh, did you say? Finance, Bing Finance, which is becoming, which is being renamed to, I think I want to say yeah. Bing to money or something. But those apps are going to be rebranded as MSN apps. And actually, the MSN part is going to be the emphasize in the apps. Like, they'll just be like news, sports, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but the, I think the reason for it is that they, they can have a web presence for this stuff at msn.com. So if you go to preview.msn.com now, you can see it. And what that means is every one of those apps, which are, again, frankly, pretty amazing. And, and today, at least for a short time now, our major selling points, I would say, for Windows and Windows uh, Phone, are, all have unique uh, integration capabilities. So, for example, in the news app, you can choose which news sources you want. You, you can have uh, news alerts and news, you can follow news stories and do things like that. I, I actually have programmed it with, you know, company names uh, from the tech industry so I can follow that kind of thing. Um, health and fitness works as you would expect with uh, health devices, including the Fitbit that I'm wearing. So you can track your, you know, nutrition and, and weight and your activity and exercise and all that kind of stuff. This is a way to have that functionality on the web, right? So previously it was available only in these apps. Now it's available on the web. And starting later this year, they'll be available in mobile app form on iOS and Android as well. And of course, that's going to freak some people out because there's always that contingent who can't stand when Microsoft does anything that's not on Windows. But... Um, I would just tell you, and I think Mary Jo would agree, um, if you've ever used these apps, they're fantastic. And getting them yeah. out to more people via the web and then again on these other platforms, I think, makes lots of sense. Yeah. They had a whole um, dedicated team at in, uh, under Bing called the Bing AppX team for application right. experience. And they their job was to show people that you could build Metro-style apps like Windows Store apps that were really mm -hmm. cool and useful and not just very simplistic and kind of lame. So they did that and they built them for Windows Phone and Windows. And now that same team is the one that's porting them to iOS and Android. And I believe those apps are written in HTML. Um, they, they, yeah, they were at least right? in the beginning. I was just going to say something yeah. to that effect. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Um, that should make it, at least in theory, fairly easy for them to move them over. Uh, but, you know, you know, the part of this, uh, the the rebranding is kind of odd, although you just made it make a lot more sense, Paul, when you when you said they, it's because of the commonality of the MSM page and then the apps. But um, yeah, I, like, I don't I, think this would make sense on Bing dot com. It wouldn't. Right. It wouldn't. No. But I like this thing they call the status strip, I think, at the top of the new page where you have Outlook and um, yeah. Xbox. And you can just go in right into your apps there. And you can even go into Facebook or Twitter there, too. Yeah, Leo, if um, you can, uh, mouse over Outlook. Just hold it there for a second. Yeah. Um, it has a fly down. Yeah. It's kind That's of a neat cool. little front end to your yeah, Microsoft yeah. stuff. What it you know? strikes me as, this is a portal, which is kind of an old school way of doing things, although a lot of people my age like portals. But then <laughs> sure. it's also, if you're going to use a portal, it's kind of an introduction to Microsoft services, isn't it? Yep. Right. And, and others, it's Facebook highly and customizable. Twitter too, you know. But uh, yeah. this, and they're it's, all, it's, it really feels like this is a way to get people into the 21st century yeah. a little bit. It's like Yahoo now, right? Like the new, well, like. It's very much like Yahoo. my Yahoo. Yeah. It Actually, reminds that, me of Yahoo by the way, I, I did invent this phrase, but uh, for, for those people who are freaking out about the MSN thing for whatever reason, because we have, we all have this tendency if I don't see it out in the world, it's not popular, you know, because you in New York experience everything that the whole world experiences or you in San Francisco experiences everything. All, you know, it, it's really not really the way it works. And 
Uh, someone said online, I think on Twitter, uh, you know, the way to think of this is Bing is Microsoft's Google. MSN is Microsoft's Yahoo. Yep. And on that sense, in that sense, this move actually does make sense. Mm -hmm. They're not going to eliminate the Bing name, are they? No, they're not. I asked them that because um, I, I, that was my first thought. I'm like, wow, I think they're rebranding Bing as MSN or something. And they said, no, we're not. It's just that. That would be nuts. We're keeping yeah, and we're not. It's a lot of people were saying, "Oh, so they're doing this, so that means they're selling Bing off." Nope, they're not doing that either. Um, nope. Right. Don't I'm surprised they didn't go all in on Bing. Yeah. Instead of going, I think, well, so by the way, originally they did, and if it, I went yeah. back and looked at my notes because when Windows 8 launched, they were talking. This was it. It was Bing powered. You know, these apps. Why are they Bing apps? They're Bing powered. You know, um, mm -hmm. I think I want yep. to say in the original. I don't remember the exact sequence of events, but I think originally Windows 8, there was a Bing app, just one Bing app. And that yeah. was the way they sort of did it. And then they started coming up with these content apps. So they had one for news, one for finance, one for sports, and you know, one for weather, I think. And obviously there's a Bing Maps app as well, yeah. uh, which will retain the Bing identity. Um, I, you know, I don't really remember how it came about, but that, some of those things like, like, what, like we're doing a Bing search for news, is that what this app is? Like it doesn't really... That's not really what it is. What yeah. it is is Microsoft getting out of the content game because Microsoft's not producing this content. They don't hire reporters to write news stories. They they're used paying to, for an aggregate. Yeah, they did, right. But yeah. they're paying for an aggregating content from high quality news sources like the Associated Press and Reuters, New York Times, et cetera, et cetera. And um, you know, it's easy to explain the news parts of it. I don't really know the news sources that are or the uh, information sources that would be in like health and fitness, but those are the organizations in those fields who are well regarded. Yep. Um, and each one of those is kind of nice like that. And so it's a way for, you know, normal people, people to get high quality information in those categories and not have to do a lot of the work themselves. Like, you know, you, Mary Jo, and I probably spend a lot of time, you know, or do spend a lot of time uh, looking at very specific kinds of news. And we have our own ways of going about that. But most people just want to know, you know, what's going on. And I think these apps do a, a fantastic job of doing that. So they, they weren't they hiring a lot of people to do Bing news and sports and all that? That's yeah. that's gone. Yeah, they've they've decided well, they got out to drop of content. It. That lasted about yeah. a month. Yep. <laughs> a couple of years, maybe. I think yeah. they, I think they were hiring them around when, when Windows Eight was being uh, launched. So I right. think they had it for a couple yeah, I think of years. You're right. Yeah. And I think they still have a few people doing news, right, Paul? Um, who are, are they're oh, like doing certain kinds of content, but not like competing with news organizations, more like uh, complementary content, I guess. Yeah, not, I mean, it's, 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 it's not their focus. No. You know? no. Microsoft yeah. is, will do a good job developing software that will let you read the news. Mm, yeah. Uh, yeah. Microsoft is not necessarily where you want to go to get the source of the news. <laughs> you know? Right. Yeah. Um, so this kind of makes sense. It was to polish up those apps to make them beautiful and good looking, and uh, probably. And they they are they're beautiful. In fact, the, the very first thing I ever said to those folks when I talked to them after the initial batch was released was, "These things are gorgeous. Are you going to release this framework yeah. so that other developers can make apps that look like this?" And they were like, "Oh no, we never really thought of that." And you know, oh. there's still nothing to that end that I'm aware of. But um, I, I think that would be a cool thing they could do as well. You caught me in the middle of a sandwich. Hold on. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Could you keep talking? Yeah. Sure. What else? The point uh, is, if you want to see what this stuff is like, you should go to preview.msn.com mm -hmm. yep. uh, and check it out. You can make that your your version of MSN. You know, sign in with your Microsoft account. And and really, I wrote an article that explains what each one of those services slash apps provides that's unique in the terms of integration. And so you can, you know, find out that kind of stuff. And and when I wrote the Windows 8 one book, you know, instead of describing every single feature in these apps, that's what I focused on was the, you know, if you go into the fit health and fitness app, you can connect your information up to help Microsoft Health Vault. Um, you, can, you can create a fitness goal, like I want to lose 50 pounds in the next six months and I want to exercise, you know, it will tell you how much you need to exercise, how many calories you can consume. You can keep track of all that stuff. You can, you know, put in your height and weight and all that kind of stuff. And each one of the apps has... Things like that. Sports has your favorite teams and favorite and favorite sports, and so you can see news just about that stuff, or you can see general sports news. Let's talk hardware. <laughs> okay. Surface Pro. Hey. Anything new about the Pro? Yeah, mine. Uh, How's it doing? Mine came up. 
came up lame today again for the first time since oh, early in the summer, you know, which, which I've heard from a few people. Uh, and this is the situation where, you, you know, you hit the power button and you wait, nothing happens. And you kind of tap on the keyboard oh, and nothing God. happens. And oh, you're like, what's going on here? And then, you know, you have to do that thing where you hold down the power button and the volume up for, you know, 12 seconds, which is really like 40 seconds. But you, you eventually, you know, you get it back. But it's a weird thing that happens to this machine. It, it happened remember that month before it was publicly released, they issued like a firmware fix for that. And um, I've had a few people say with their most recent firmware update, this has happened. And I kind of took note of that. And then I just today I went, you know, I went to turn it on and I'm like, uh -huh, what's going on here? And I don't know, you know, so I don't know if there's another problem, but there's a firmware. <sighs> You get it. <laughs> Would you not recommend this hardware for people uh, given these problems? Um, no, I, the thing is, actually, so I still really, really like the Surface Pro 3. I mean, it's it's um, incredibly portable. It's incredibly powerful. It's an actual PC. It's good as a tablet. It's the type of thing that's wonderful to take on a plane because it has a built-in kickstand and it's not humongous. And the person in front of you puts their seat down. It doesn't matter. Um, I still really, really, really enjoy it. I mean, um, it's kind of a tough, it's kind of a tough love thing. I don't know. <laughs> it's, uh, mm. But yeah, it's weird. I, 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 yeah. To be fair, this is only the second time this has ever happened to me. So um, hopefully it's not a new thing, but yeah, it's been reliable overall. And they did release this firmware update. Actually, you know, you may know because we talk about it every month, every patch Tuesday, they release uh, firmware updates for all Surface models. Um, you know, not every single one gets a firmware update every month. This month was unique in, in that only Surface Pro 3 got a firmware or got firmware updates. I think there were four or five of them. And one of them appears to fix the long-standing Wi-Fi problem that people have been reporting, which I have which not Which they fixed once before, and now they've fixed again. Uh, possibly they fixed twice a before. Few times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah. third time's a charm, as you know, with Microsoft. But... Uh, <laughs> Uh, well, I, this is one I haven't, I can't honestly say I've experienced since the RT, you know, since the general availability of the product. Um, Paul, by now I'd be throwing this thing against the wall. I, I don't understand your patience. No, I, I have not, ex I, I haven't had the Wi-Fi problem. So that's, oh, oh, I, okay. this is one of those things I've heard people complain you've had, about. You've had other problems, but not I've, that one. No, I actually haven't had to. In other words, I just had this problem, the startup problem, but I haven't had this problem since June or whatever, since before it came out. My experience, by and large, has actually been okay. very positive. So don't be deceived by all these reports. Then these are no, no. I, I, I would. I don't mean to discount anything that people have complained about. I'm sure people really are seeing what they're seeing. Um, you know, some people have said that uh, this firmware update made their machines run cooler, which is a particular issue on the mm -hmm. i7 versions. I don't have such a machine, so I can't really say um, how that works. I keep waiting for. I'm, I'm like, I am curious now about how to. You know how this thing will work if I if I turn it off. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so you you were able to get it back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Rebecca, you might recall. I mean, back in June, I think this happened to me when I went on a trip to Colorado, and and the machine yeah. hadn't come out publicly yet, and they were promising a fix. And I woke up one morning in the hotel, and it was the only machine I traveled with, which is so wonderful, you know, unless it doesn't come on, and I I <laughs> couldn't get it to come on, and I was freaking out. And um, when I got to work, I had to borrow a laptop at work and um, Microsoft, I contacted Microsoft. They, they explained to me the secret, you know, handshake you got to do to, that will always bring it back. And it does. I mean, it, you know, and it did at that time and it did today too. So good. As long as you know the trick, <laughs> you're good to go. Uh, all right. What, anything else about the Surface Pro 3 or should we? You want to talk about the... No, that's uh, about the, it. I mean, I, the only, I, I just have a mention of the HP laptop. You know, yeah. we were all excited back in July when they talked about the 199. It's not really 200 bucks. Yeah, so HP just put their preview page up for it, and it's $300, not $200, uh, which is still actually a really good deal for that kind of hardware. Um, <laughs> Here's, this is a, a lesson on how to disappoint people with a $300 price. <laughs> Say it's $200 for a while, and then... Uh, so uh, Paul, I have a theory, I, though. Yeah, I wanted okay. to ask you about this. Remember, we the the place that we heard this price was at the Worldwide Partner Conference when Kevin Turner held it up, right, and said, "Yeah, this is coming." And um, I remember yeah. some people said he was talking about two different laptops from HP. Yeah, right? like the HP Stream that was just announced is a 14-inch device. It, it looks yeah. a lot like their Chromebook. 
You know, it's a yeah. different processor, yeah. but uh, really similar, super similar, same price. Right. You know, um, the thing he held up looked like an 11 inch mini laptop. Yeah. Right. Um, so it's possible there's an HP stream coming that will be an 11 inch version that will yeah. be 199. Mm -hmm. So, you know, HP, uh, you know, <laughs> I guess if you're looking for a company that can uh, communicate even worse than Microsoft, I think we maybe we found <laughs> it. Like, given all of this excitement, seriously, over the $200 laptop, I think they might have, you know, said, hey, by the way, we've got two of these things, and one of them is 200 bucks. Right. Or if that's the case. I think that is the case. Yeah, I think I as so. I've looked, I've seen both. Yeah. 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 It's still, by the way, it, it looks great. I, this bucks. Come on, it's Windows it, but, 8 but and everything. So I have a three hundred dollar laptop that looks like a like a tank from East Germany in the nineteen seventies, right. right. and it's by the way, it's fine. It really is fine. This machine, the the three hundred dollar stream, is a it's just a beautiful looking machine. It really is attractive. It's nice. Hmm. So I mean, I, I that's notable. Uh, let's take a break. When we come back, uh, <laughs> the Verge says Microsoft's dropping the Nokia and Windows Phone branding. I don't know what that's that means. That's not really the Verge saying that, but everybody's yeah. saying that. <laughs> the Verge re-reporting. Re I have a yeah. slightly different take on that, by the way. I, I want to get your take. Yeah. Yeah, we should. We don't have it in our notes, but we could add it. Yeah, and that's yeah. other windows. I almost, I almost tweeted that during the show, and I decided to hold off on it because I. That's not yeah. really what that says. But, that's okay. Okay. Let's. That's what I see. That's why we tune in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because we want to know what the experts. No, no. I just. Say. This is someone who can actually read a piece of paper. <laughs> That's good enough. Makes <laughs> you an expert. What it's, I just, you know. Makes you an expert. Paul Thrapp, Mary Jo Foley are here. Our show today is brought to you by IT Pro TV. Uh, it's funny. I'm talking more and more to uh, Twit viewers who have signed up for IT Pro TV and are thrilled with it. It is a way to polish your IT skills or maybe get the IT skills and get a better job. I know a lot of people who... Uh, who watch Twit uh, love technology, but they're not working in technology, and they say, boy, it'd be really cool if I could get into it. Well, you know, the, the key is getting those skills, and maybe even more important, getting that piece of paper that says you have the skills. They call them the certs, the certifications, and there is no better way to get those certs than IT Pro TV. Tim and Don, the founders of uh, IT Pro TV, um, were trainers. They were teaching people how to do this stuff for years. They saw what we did on Twit. They, they were big fans of the screensavers, and they said, what can we do to make it easier to get the certs, to get to learn and they created it pro tv they use the same tricaster the same microphones as they have a beautiful studio they broadcast 30 hours a week live with live chat room so just like us you can get in there ask questions and participate it pro tv is a great solution for anybody who uh, wants to learn uh, and get the certs whether it's a plus microsoft apple cisco ccna security plus I mean, they even have Linux Plus certifications now. So you can learn anything. Windows, OS X, Linux. You can get a better job. It's fun to watch. You can watch on your computer, your tablet, but they also have a Roku app. That's really nice because it means that you can uh, watch, uh, you know, have it running in the house all the time. There's Don. Uh, and, uh, and, and, that, and there's Tim. This is the video on the IT Pro TV site explaining what they're doing and why they started IT Pro TV. It really is fantastic. And they've got a special deal, by the way. Uh, if you're fans uh, of uh, Windows Weekly and you go to Windows Weekly, uh, or I'm sorry, itpro.tv slash WW, <laughs> there they are. They're such geeks <laughs> in the fesses. Uh, um, you can, uh, you can uh, get a big discount. Let me tell you before I tell you what the discount is. What you get with IT Pro TV, you get those 30 courses, 30 hours a week live. You get many, many, many courses, uh, hundreds of hours that they have recorded live. Um, it's cheaper than going on an IT boot camp. It's actually probably comparable to the cost of buying one book. Uh, it's interactive. They have uh, for the, the measure up practice exams before you take the real thing. That's worth 79 bucks just by itself. They also have a virtual machine sandbox lab you can use with any HTML5 browser. So if you don't have Windows Server, you don't have clients, or you're afraid of messing up your work network, you can set it all up in their virtual lab. Mess it up all you want. And uh, it's, it really is cool. 
here's the deal. Normally $57 a month, $570 for the entire year because they're fans of Twit and because we've sent them a lot of business. Uh, they have an offer for you. If you use the offer code WW30, you'll get 30% off for the life of your account. That means it's less than 40 bucks a month. You buy a year, it's 399 bucks. I mean, that is a great deal. Just check out how much it costs to get these, you know, study for these certs at a technical school, and you'll see, wow, I'm saving a lot of money, plus 30% off. ITPro.tv slash WW for the introductory tour. There's lots of free content so you can see what they do. And when you decide to buy, use the code WW30 and get 30% off. It pays for itself because you're going to get a better job. ITPro. What are you laughing at? ITPro.tv slash WW. Paul's laughing. Are you, are you, are you, oh, no, wait a minute. I'm sorry. He's reading his Family Circus comic for the day. No, it was, uh, it's funny you mentioned Family Circus. I have a pet peeve about that. You are in comic. the Family Circus. That's your life is Family Circus. <laughs> The unfunniest comic ever written. There's a, um, I used to live in Phoenix, which is where Bill Keen's from, or um, what's the guy's name? Yeah, Keen. Bill Keen. Yeah. Is it Bill Keen? I don't remember, but yeah. Keen. Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah I think it's Keen. I'm Bill Keen, yeah. No, I was just laughing at my own internal joke. I, I saw <laughs> an, an Android website that has, this is the lead headline, the best calculator apps for Android. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's some hard-hitting coverage right there. <laughs> That's good. Let me make a note of that. I need some good calculator Because, <laughs> you know, you got to spend time on the calculator apps. Doesn't every phone come with a calculator? All right. Oh, geez, All right. Seriously. Um, I, I like the the light on this flashlight app better than the other one. <laughs> Whatever. The best okay, 10 best flashlight apps. Windows yes, Phone. Exactly. Let's, let's talk Windows Phone. By the way, yes. Windows Phone does come with a calculator, ladies and gentlemen. Quite a nice. <laughs> yes. There's also some nice uh, flashlight apps available. For there the you phone. go. Yes, there are. No need to suffer. Nope. Yeah. So there, there was. There's been a bunch of rumors about um, how Microsoft's going to get its branding house in order since it brought Nokia in, and. Um, there's been talk, I, I think Evleaks was the first one who was talking about this, saying that, that there was a whole schedule that Microsoft had uh, where they were going to phase out the Nokia brand. And, of course, a lot of people outside of the U.S. said that's going to be suicide because outside the U.S. that brand is huge. And it still sounded like that was the plan. Uh, right. Maybe it, He was saying there it was going to be like um, 18 months after the close of the acquisition and it was going to be – uh, through December 31st, 2015, I think they had a plan of a staggered rollout. So today, um, a site that I didn't know called geekongadgets.com say they have an internal document from Microsoft that says Microsoft's going to hide the Nokia brand from all their products starting this Christmas season. But didn't so, they say that already? I mean, that's no, it, but... No? So of. actually, here's the thing. If you go and you look at this document, that I, assuming they're publishing it in full, and, and this is not just a page um, of something bigger, what it says yeah. is, as part of a phase transition, we will drop the manufacturer name from product references during the holiday campaign. The holiday right. campaign is it like an advertising campaign. It is. Yeah. So does that just mean they're not going to say Nokia in ads? Or right. does that actually mean they're going to remove the Nokia name from actual products? I think it's the ads. Yeah. I now, mean, maybe if there are phones, though, that come out this holiday season, they might just be Lumia, not Nokia. By the way, maybe they will, but I'm not entirely sure that that's what that says. Yeah, I, I guess, agree. you know, in other words, I, I don't doubt that Microsoft is going to drop the Nokia name over time from these products. Um, we know that they're using the Lumia name instead of Nokia for the yeah. apps, which makes plenty of sense. Yep. I like that they're keeping the Lumia name. I think that's also smart. But I, I don't look at this and say this is, you know, this is conclusive proof that this is happening. I look at this and Agreed. say, you know, you could yeah. you could read this a couple of different ways. And this comes yeah. from your years of parsing. Of Microsoft. being able to read, Leo. <laughs> <laughs> of my Dedham public school education actually doing something positive for a change. <laughs> I can read, says Paul Theron. <laughs> so, uh, but, but, I don't know. But, okay, a couple of things. First of all, we because we've talked about this several times, Microsoft did, in the purchase agreement, retain the right yes. to use the Nokia name through, what, 2018? Yeah, years. Remember, years. Yeah. Years. But Nokia does Doesn't continue mean, to sell phones, right? They're selling uh, their own low-end phones. <laughs> Microsoft does. No, no Loki doesn't sell any phones at all. No, right, but, but no, the phones oh, are they all can. In a couple of years, they can. 
they, they can, can start again. But those those are right. new phones. Those would be new. That's okay. In 2015, I think. Right. By the way, so you'd have to be year, insane to enter the phone market. Well, they I don't think they will. But next year they could. And if I'm Microsoft, I want to kind of wean people off that name to avoid brand confusion. And if they should. Right. And there's a company yep. still named Nokia, right? That is a whole different right. company now that has here maps and that yeah. they're telco stuff. I mean, so why, it doesn't make sense for Microsoft to have that brand now because there's a company named Nokia that is a different company. The only argument is that Nokia, not so much in the U.S., but all over the world, is a very powerful brand. It is. That's the only counter argument to it. Right. You, it, it, are they, though, anymore? It, it, it's like yeah. Sears. <laughs> yeah, you know, what I mean, good is Sears? Everybody knows it. Uh, but they what does were a it mean? big brand, you know, yeah, for a long no, time. But a I, I don't know. I don't Nokia's know. I a big brand, fading, isn't it's fading I mean, quick. Everybody in Ger um, we got a couple of German visitors. That's a that's a powerful brand in uh, in Germany. I don't think Microsoft may be quite as powerful a brand. Certainly not if you're buying a, a phone. I sure. don't know. But they have that. Well, whatever. They have to walk. I saw. I swear to God, I saw a Nokia phone in the Star Trek movie. There is a Nokia phone in the future. <laughs> 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 Right? Am I yeah. wrong? Well, phones used to be, they were so um, unusual. You'd see them in movies. Captain yeah. Kirk, you know, in the, he, in, had one. he had a Nokia. For, remember, he, okay, yeah. I'm just saying. So we know yeah. there's got to be a Nokia in the future. It's out there. It's, it's out, out there. there somewhere. <laughs> yep. Well, the we other, also the know that thing, a PowerBook though, computer is going to save us for millions. That's right. <laughs> that's true, too. There's, a, there's another thing in this guy's post, though. Geek on Gadgets. Uh, says, furthermore, the document also reveals Microsoft's going to take away the Windows Phone logo and just start using Windows um, instead of it doesn't Windows show Phone. us that part of the document, though. It does not show us that part of the document. Right. Um, Michael Gillett, who um, is a longtime Windows watcher, he has a new blog called PipTel. Dot com. He, he uh, I think a week or so ago, was saying, you know what, I think Microsoft's going to drop the phone off this and it's just going to be powered by windows that windows phones sense. powered by windows or something why right? not um, so it's a, a way, windows phone with a small p i know in a way this makes sense and another way a lot of people are like oh this is going to be super confusing because windows phone os is not windows i don't know uh from the average yeah. well it sort of is i mean it is it is it's going to be more and more like that right as they go towards the one window. They have a serious brand idea. problem here. I, I, I actually think brands. the Windows name is one of the biggest problems with the Windows phones. I, yeah, I, I, maybe. I, and you know what? It's the, the Windows brand is in many ways like the MSN brand. It's a very much more loved brand outside the U.S. than inside the U.S. Hmm, There's really? there There are countries where people think it is a huge and very valued brand. And Microsoft has all kinds of studies showing this. Hmm. Uh, so... They're keeping it. I mean, in a way, Windows still is Microsoft, so it would be tough to totally drop that and get away from that. To be fair, the chat room is pointing out that the Nokia phone in Star Trek <laughs> did go off a cliff. Whoops. In Hebrew, apparently. It did. Well, this was the new, <laughs> uh, new Star Trek. This though. is the new Star Trek. That's the young <laughs> James Kirk driving a Corvette <laughs> with a Nokia phone. That's which hilarious. he then drove off the cliff. So, oh, so maybe there is no future. <laughs> so James Kirk, James T. Kirk killed Nokia. Is he what killed I just Nokia. Said. <laughs> Thank you, chat room, for that link. <laughs> <laughs> and now this entire podcast will be taken down by J.J. Abrams. <laughs> <clears throat> I don't. I have to tell you, I am <sighs> always nervous when it's a gadget blog I have never heard of. Same. Yeah. Um. They could make stuff up. They often do. So I don't. Well, I mean, the Windows lo uh, brand thing that Mary Jo was just talking about has been making the rounds. You know, that right. is. so it would be very easy to make uh, draw some credence to this other thing by saying, "Oh, by the way, it also says this," and we all know that's true. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I do. I mean, I think like Mary Jo, I, I, it, it, there, there's a certain amount of sense uh, to dropping the Windows Phone thing because right now. They they are and they seem like two different things and I think it does make sense to make it one thing you know um, at this point and so I think we'll see that soon you know when Windows nine just becomes Windows that's just a guess though I don't know anything about it but I I I think they should do that yeah it makes sense branding is tough it is it's really tough yeah. and there's uh, you know these companies um, spend big bucks. With consultants and research and studies, and there's still no clear right answer. Look at Apple. Apple has named the watch 
a watch. Uh -huh. Right. There's an Apple logo, which can't be reproduced on anything but Apple hardware. Uh, yes. Watch. Mm, yeah. Its name is Watch, or maybe mm -hmm. Square, because <laughs> Windows. That's when you, you look see. at it on their site, it, it literally says Watch. Watch. Yeah. At the top, you know, the, on so the menu bar. So they didn't make that up. Somebody, it wasn't like t Tim Cook's great idea. Right. They hired consultants. They paid yeah. lots of money for that. Right. Okay. Just, I'm just <laughs> they all saying. do that, right? They I know. all they do all... that. And remember when Microsoft was trying to figure out what's a brand Bing? I mean, they spent millions of dollars. Yeah. They had all these tests and multiple <laughs> That's what they came trade up with. Perks. Yeah. They came up with Bing. Yep. Yeah. It's really interesting. Kumo was a choice. K U M O. Kumo. Well, that's the yeah. other issue. You're in a global marketplace now, so yeah. words don't mean the same all over the world. Um, yeah. So it's tricky, and you got to get the website. Right. That's and you have to think about how does it sound in different languages. Right. Like, I kumoed it. I kumoed you know? it. <laughs> Bing, Bing is actually pretty good. It's not that bad. Except it sounds like a, a little toyish, toy like. Yeah. Yeah. And so in, the, in America, in English, at least, it sounds like it's like a little, it's not serious. But what, of course, does Google mm. sound serious? Google. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's Google. fair. We live in a weird world. Yeah. Um, AT and T is going to have the eight thirty. What is the what is the Nokia? What is the Lumia to get these days? Now that my fifteen twenty is dead, yeah, you need a you need a matrix based on wireless carrier. Yeah, yeah. And the problem with the fifteen twenty trying to replace that device or a ten twenty for that matter is that there isn't one you know that's that good. Um, the eight twenty is more of a mid level device, not a flagship device. They call it the affordable flagship, but. Um, you know, as I think a 10 megapixel camera, as opposed to a tw I think a 21 on the 1520 and a 41 on the 1020. I feel like they're not uh -huh. going to sell any more of those super pec megapixel phones. So I've heard that they are, oh. and mm -hmm. that yeah. we need to be patient. Oh, <laughs> so yeah. good because that's you know, I mean, look what Apple made a lot of hay on the camera in the new iPhone. You know, this is I don't know, Mary Jo, if you see this kind of thing, but I I have grown a little distraught lately at the reactions that everything gets these days, you know. Um, Nokia, Microsoft announces these two kind of mid-level phones mm -hmm. and everyone's freaking out about, you know, what about Verizon? What about AT&T? Yeah. Um, you know, people are like, I, I still need something to replace my Lumia 920. Your Lumia 920, and it's like two years old. Um, they've had a 1020 and a 1520 since then. Why, you know, I... I, I, think, I, I think they're um, just saying, and it's the end of my two-year contract, so I'm in why the market. Why is it not something new right new now? Phone. Right, I want. I, I don't want to think that's ship. how it works. But it is you know? the, isn't this the big quarter for uh, buying phones? The fourth quarter. Yeah, right before the holidays. I think we're going right? to. I think we're going to see new stuff by the end of the year on yeah. those um, carriers, yeah. and so I would just say, you know, we know the eight thirty will be on AT and T because Stephen okay. Elop said so. And um, T Mobile too, right? Somebody from T Mobile, I think, tweeted at the end of last uh, week. Oh, okay. I think you're right. Yeah, yeah. T Mobile good. as well. So that's good. You know, the 735 is going to be on Verizon, according to uh, Daniel Rubino over at well, uh, Windows mm -hmm. Phone Central. So, you know, the, those new phones are coming to the U.S. That wasn't what I was told, but great. Yeah. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. Um, good. And so that's yeah. good. Actually, and if, you know, again, if you're waiting for the high-end thing, I mean, I get it. But, you know, um, yeah. the 1520 is perfectly viable today. There's nothing wrong with it. Some people think it's too big. That I understand. Um, what we need is something, you know, what we need basically is the 930, uh, yep. which is the international version of the icon on AT&T. I'd, I'd love to have that phone on AT&T. Yep. Um, and so we'll see what they do. But I, I think we're going to hear about something pretty soon. Yeah. The rumor is successor to the 1020, right? So something with a super duper camera, uh, maybe. Yeah. Uh, interesting. And what uh, about But this, I haven't heard that first. What about yeah. this blue phone? Yeah, that yeah so um, Daniel Rubino, again, had uh, tweeted something about this the other day, that this blue phone is now available on Amazon for $89. Bucks. And he ordered one and he reviewed it and, or, you know, kind of did a hands-on kind of thing with it. And um, if you're familiar with the low-end Nokia phones that are available today, you know that there's a 530 that replaced the 520, and that phone is, is garbage. Um, mm. This is comparable to that, but better you know, in almost every conceivable way. And it's super cheap, $89 to start, uh, no contract. It's a, um, so it's only... It's the Wynn uh, Jr. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's got a silly name. But if you go if you go to Windows Phone Central and look this phone up, you can see, you know, what he wrote about it. And uh, the camera quality is decent for what it is. The build quality is excellent. Um, and a much nicer phone than the 530 in the same price range. 
Um, if you're going to compare it to like a 635, uh, which, you know, un, no contract, I think is more uh, closer to the maybe 125, possibly 140 range. Um, the 635 is a bigger screen, slightly better specs, but um, they're actually pretty comparable, according to Daniel, who I would trust. And um, uh, I, this I, is, you know, again, if looking for a low. While Apple is eschewing the low end, I know. it looks like these the, the, the real roundhouse, the sweet spot for Microsoft is in these low end phones. Yeah. yeah, and that's where they've seen success. Nothing so wrong it, with it that. Nope. Yeah, that's a bigger. By business. the way, when when you make Windows Phone in this case or Windows available for free on low cost, low end devices, you're going to get uh, you're going to get those devices. Of, <laughs> and this is one of, of you know Android twenty or so phones. that's coming out this year. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but there's not there's nothing wrong with that. And and then so Microsoft will continue to make the high end. Well, I mean, not just high end, but mostly high end feature phones. And then as Lumia's. And then there's a big You'll market. see a few. Yeah, I mean, I, you won't see as many because they just don't make as much sense for this market. But I, obviously, Microsoft, as they do with Surface, you know, they need a showcase for the, what's possible with Windows Phone. Right. Um, yeah. They also need volume. I and mean, let's face it, market share really does matter. So, yeah. Uh, they need, you know, they need numbers too. <laughs> so, yeah. It's, I, it's, yeah, it's inter It's very interesting. Yeah. 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 Um, it's a much more fragmented market than it used to be. Yeah. I've asked them though. Uh, I've asked a couple times recently. So, are you guys getting out of the flagship space and leaving that to OEMs? Like, are you just done and only focusing low or mid range? They keep saying no. So, right. Me too. Yep. Yep. Because what you know, when I, I I met with them to see the eight thirty and the seven thirty seven thirty five, and I you know I said, look, I, I'm sorry, I have to ask because people are going to bitch and moan about this. Yep. You are going to have follow ups that are high, actual high end phones, right? Right. Like, well, we're not talking about that today. And I'm like, no, I, I get that. But you are you are at some point. And it was like, oh, of course. You know, it seemed it was silly to even ask. And I'm like, you understand that I have to ask because people freak out <laughs> about everything. People freaked out about the MSN naming thing we talked about earlier. People freaked out because these phones weren't high-end phones. And that's what they apparently want. Yep. You know, I mean, people... And you know yeah, the people we you know. the people we talk to on Twitter are the people who want the flagship phones, right? right? They're that's right. the audience. That's our the audience. audience. Yeah. For this oh, I want one too. But you know, yeah. I, I look at the A30 and I think actually that looks nice as a phone. This meets my needs. I think. I mean, I'll need to spend actual time with it and take my own photos and all that. But yeah. it's um, nice and thin, though, kinda, right? It's yeah, thin it's, and it's light. wonderful. It's if you ever like. Well, actually, I thought about this later because we talked about this last week. You have an icon, don't you? I do. Yeah, so an icon is is a fairly large phone. It's a big and heavy yep. and thick yep. phone, right? I mean, especially compared to your eight yep. X. Yep. So, you know, the nice thing about the eight thirty is it's it's that basic. It is literally that design, but thin down. I mean, not exactly fifty percent, but it's so much thinner yep. and lighter. Mm -hmm. And um, and those two phones, the new ones, the seven thirty, seven thirty five, and the eight thirty, you know, they're 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 so light. It's almost silly. And and. If you have any background at all with Nokia devices, you know going back to the 800 or the 920 yeah. or whatever, a lot of these phones were really dense and heavy. Mm. And these new ones are not like that. Nope. Is There's a little risk too, though, but doing low-end stuff. Uh, Windows Phone Central also has a review of the Yez Billy, which they saw at IFA. Uh, <laughs> Another great name for a phone, by the way. <laughs> I know. So crazy. I mean, named after Bill Gates. It's yeah. like throwing random letters together. Yes, no, Billy. named after Gates. Bill Gates, <laughs> and they they say it's terrible. It's underpowered, and and so oh, that really? oh. yeah, that's the risk. Also, is that uh, if you, it, when there's crap out there and people try it, they might sure. just assume, oh, these Windows phones are awful. That's why Microsoft By the way, has um, to make flagship phones. I'm sorry, but last Saturday I, I set out to do a bunch of errands, and among those errands was I was going to visit both T-Mobile and AT and T and kind of figure out what I wanted to do in the future for a wireless carrier. And uh, I walked into the T-Mobile store and I literally, this is what I walked into. It was a woman helping a guy buying a phone. And she said, and actually for the same price over here, we have this Windows phone you might want to look at. And he said, oh, what's this? And it was a 635. And the guy said, this is only whatever it was, whatever the price, 99 or 129 or whatever. And she said, yeah. And he goes, yeah, I'll take this. Wow. <laughs> I was like, what, what is this alternate universe I've just walked into? Wow. You know, <laughs> I was like, sign wow. me up. I love this place. Yeah. Yeah. I love yeah, T-Mobile. I, I am a very happy T-Mobile customer. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm going to London in a week or two weeks, and uh, I don't have to – I went online to say, well, what's going to be the international plan? There is no international plan. Mm. Well, you can you can pay more to get, like, 4G-type coverage. Can you? Because you only get 2G, I understand. It's unlimited 2G for free. Which, by the way, I used in Spain the whole time we were there. It's fine, it right? Yeah, it worked And fine. 
unlimited international texting, which frankly is the most important thing to me. And then cheap calling. The calling and is really cheap, too. Cheap calling. Without doing anything. Without like doing you anything. You, you literally just bring the phone. You don't make any switches. You don't do airplane mode. You don't turn it's up great. cellular or anything. You just bring your phone. So so yeah. the, oh, I looked wonderful. and I couldn't find, because I thought, well, what if I wanted to buy a 4G package? No, you can. You, you can. can do that. Okay. Yeah. I didn't see that. I'll have to look. Yeah, you might have to, I don't know, talk to someone or whatever. You can. You can. You can. You can. <laughs> I hate that. You can't. I should be. I should go to a, a special group for people who don't want to talk to uh, people and only want to talk to. Wait a minute, their phones. Here we go. We have it. Here is that special group. Thanks to Microsoft. Okay, everyone. We're here to oh. talk openly about our relationships. Who would like to begin? Jake. <laughs> Feel betrayed. Anyone else? Clay? I guess I was expecting too much. I'm a spontaneous guy, and it seems like when I'm ready to go out, she just can't keep up. So everyone was expecting more from Siri. She doesn't understand a f***ing thing about me. <laughs> we all so saw great. the commercials. Her hanging out with celebrities, acting all cool and stuff. Mm -hmm. I want to, you know... I want to be a part of stuff. Same here. But when I ask her for something, it's the same old story. I'm sorry. I don't understand. Udon noodles. Ooh. Udon noodles. <laughs> you guys understand that? Because she doesn't. <laughs> huh? She got them for me. Oh, you get it from this guy and not for me? That's not fair. Come on, look at him. Blaine. <laughs> Udon. I just feel like I have to think of everything. You know, where's the spontaneity? An occasional suggestion. Would be nice. Hi. Well, actually, I've heard that Cortana does that. I've heard good things about Cortana, too. When were you planning on sharing that? Play, I'm here to help you with your relationships, not end them. I want to end my relationship. If you jump from one relationship to the other, you'll never grow. Cortana does that. She grows with you. She picks up on your likes and adapts to you. This didn't air on TV, obviously. I, mean, it's, this is Hold up. I think they're chopping it up for TV. Yeah. How do you know so much about Cortana? <laughs> I just said, <laughs> Lena, is there something you'd like to share? Uh, I'm sorry, I do not understand. <laughs> oh, that's cute. <laughs> this is good. <laughs> this is really good. That's a good ad. <laughs> and, of course, it's a Microsoft ad for the Lumia 635. Right. Notice Lumia, no Nokia. Yep. On that ad, by the way. <laughs> I can read, too, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> You're not the only one. I'm though. not the only <laughs> one. All right, we got we to gotta move here. Xbox. Oh. All right, we can get through this really quickly. Please. Because it's not Call of Duty. <laughs> um, so Ooh, Don. Udon. <laughs> Udon. Udon. Uh, Xbox One is heading up to 29 markets this month. Some of that's already happening. It's already happened. It's happening over the course of the month. And so some of these were, I don't know, I remember six or seven of these were countries they were originally going to launch in last holiday season, and they pulled back in August or September. Uh, now it's finally happening. So it only took about a year, but uh, Xbox, by the end of this month, should be basically in most of the markets we can get a PS4. And so... It will be even more embarrassing when we don't beat the PS4 after that. All right, so... Um, <laughs> Look, it's not numbers, Paul. Just keep right, saying and this just over and over. It's so, not market share. <laughs> really? Because I think it's kind of stuff. <laughs> so, um, yeah, as you know, um, they have a new uh, system update for Xbox One that comes out every month. And so people are in the preview program and now getting early access to the October version of that, which includes major improvements to the Snap interface, which drives me insane currently, so I'm really looking forward yeah, to that. Yeah, Snap doesn't work real well for me. Oh, and I so want to use it with the I, NFL I, because I want to Snap yeah, my... Uh... I fumble every time I use Snap. I, I, it makes me crazy, and yeah. I can tell looking at this, this is going to fix that. And so that's good. Good. There's a bunch of other stuff. I mean, most of it's not really dramatic. Um, media player app, which is terrible, is going to get DLNA support, um, so it's not just USB. That's nice. Uh, and that's, I don't know, for me, that's most of it. And what else? Uh, dun, 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 dun. Oh, Mary Jo's got a, an Xbox One story in here. <laughs> what? How did that happen? Well, I, I just saw it. It's not mine. But um, yeah, I guess there is a small, quote, small number of customers who are reporting excessive amounts of noise coming from their Xbox One consoles, and Microsoft is replacing them. Wow. 
Yeah, they're are they going to replace, gonna replace the ones the that are too big for my living room? <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Because <laughs> I have that problem. It's too big for your living room. <laughs> it's so huge, Leo. <laughs> I, my Volkswagen is smaller. Than no, this, it's so not. I, I have my. By the way, my Xbox One haven't. I don't hear anything. It's quiet. yeah. No, it's not. Yeah. Uh, I love my Xbox One. It's sitting right yeah. there under my sure. curved screen TV and my stereo mm -hmm. system. In the rack there, and it looks gorgeous, and I'm very, very happy. Yeah. I love the. I don't know how many people this is. It's yeah, just saying is... people are saying the console is too loud. Somebody's got and a so... big fan. Where did you blade. see this? Uh, Kotaku. Is that how you say that? Kotaku. 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 Actually, that's a very that's a reliable gaming site. Kotaku. Kotaku. Yeah. See, I never go on gaming sites. I don't yeah. even know how to say you that word. You would know that. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. If, but they're saying it's if you're P having interest, it. Interest, it, Mary Jo. P interest. <laughs> P interest. Exactly. Go to support.xbox.com <laughs> and you can request a replacement if you're one of those small number of people. Uh, they'll have my Xbox when they pry it from my cold dead fingers. <laughs> have you filled up your internal hard drive yet, Leo? No, because remember, I bought a three terabyte external drive. Okay. And Do you I know have, how close you were to filling it, though? Yes. Because I'm like, I think I, I'm at like seven. So. Yes. Because when wow. it first boots up, it doesn't see the external drive. And, and that, yeah, and that green bar goes all, all the way around. I'm oh, yeah. yeah. And then it says, oh, no, you have 2.9 terabytes left. And I go, thank you. <laughs> oh. It's so nice. That it's, you just buy an external USB drive. It recognizes it. You don't have to do anything. And it's all there, and the games get saved. And, and you know, games are big. Uh, Diablo was over 20 gigabytes. Destiny's 18 gigabytes. These things are massive. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. So you really, and by the way, I'm no more, never going to buy another disc. This is like when Apple added uh, Retina displays to the devices, and all of a sudden yeah. the games were yeah. like 50 megabytes to 1.9 gigabytes. Yeah. <laughs> it was like yeah. this crazy yeah. job. Yeah. You know? But I am very happy with, uh, yeah. I play Diablo in, you know, three it f nonstop for two, three weeks. Wow, <laughs> love it. Mm -hmm. Now, was I Diablo do. a Call of Duty game? Because I don't recall. I that feel one. so sorry for you, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> but is it like Call of Duty? You're missing out on all these. There's there's Guacamelee. No, I've been I've been playing. Uh, Play Guacamelee. That is. Was it Daniel Rubino who told me how good that was? That's a great little. It's one of those indie games. Free, you know, right. inexpensive indie right. games. Just uh, so fun. Apparently. Um, Somebody in the chat room saying Destiny, which came out yesterday, cost half a billion to make. Wow. You, no talk, you talk about how expensive movies are. The opening cinematic is like the beginning of a Star Wars movie. Oh, yeah. It's great. You know? I, I mean, it's, it. it's, it's really impressive. Apparently, they made it all back in the first day. Oh, yeah? Mm, wow. Yes. <laughs> wow. When I played Diablo 3, because I played it on the computer, I played it on the PC all the way through, mm -hmm. you know, last year. And it's it's so beautiful. There's so much detail, so much art. It's so big. Right. It really, I have to say, and you know, it's a brave new world. Uh, all right, let's take. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Jeez. No, we can skip the other stuff. We kind of. You asks yeah. Google for more search concessions. Apple announces new iPhones. I, I who cares? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you said the real star of the show, Tim Cook. But wait a minute. Did you watch it where he touches Bono? Oh dear God. <laughs> So <laughs> I think there could be a really funny videotape made of the most awkward moments ever oh. in an Apple keynote. Oh. And like 27 of them were in yesterday's. And from Phil Schiller's like horrible jokes that fell flat on everybody to I, like I kept thinking, OK, I've now seen the most stilted fake moment I've ever seen in a keynote. And then Bono and him tried to, pretended to have an impromptu conversation oh. about that was so, oh. so awful. What is wrong with that? They oh. uh, never do that again. Well, it's terrible. It's, it's now a meme. It's now a meme on uh, on all over the place. Here's it's like E.T., you know, and Elliot, like, putting uh, their fingers together. That's exactly what... Ouch. And yeah. Now, and now they're making a steeple, or they're... I don't know what they're doing. Uh, uh, it's so uh, terrible. <laughs> Three, two, one. Please don't make... <sighs> that is weird. Cringe-inducing. It was so cringe-inducing. Awful. And Tim Cook was so, you know, he was so happy. <laughs> <laughs> Goofily happy. I, I should say, you know, um, well, Tim Cook had be. his, last June, um, Phil Schiller let out that, you know, can't innovate my ass yeah, comment, which yeah. was very telling about his, yeah. you know, his actual perception of what was yeah. happening. Yeah. Um, Tim Cook had that moment yesterday where 
that he he finally announced his own product, and he actually didn't just cheer; he he, he ran yeah. out like pumping his yeah. arms. And I no, thought, I think that's what it was exactly. Wow, this is this is the weight of the world coming yep. off this guy's shoulder. Finally, like, out I have never seen Steve. anything as bald faced yep. as that. I mean, yes, it was very yeah, that clear. was very yeah. interesting. We um, watched him. We had a camera crew down there, and we watched him leaving the event, signing autographs. And you, he was he like visibly shaking, like he was walking floating. out. Like, he was. Yeah. His loafers were three inches off the ground. He sure. was, and rightly yeah. so, because he, you know what, Tim, Tim's been underneath Steve Jobs for ten years. Oh, God. Mm. By the way, it didn't help that he announced it with the one more thing thing, but you know, yeah. whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, no. that was his thing. That was a way of a nod. Yeah, yeah. It was a nod, Thank and you. you know what? The app. You don't yeah. see the Apple fans loved that. We all went. Oh, oh no! I, he said way, one I, more of thing. course, of course, they do. But I mean, yeah. if you're trying to get out from Steve Jobs' shadow. Evoking Steve Jobs is not necessarily the smartest thing to do. That's all. You can't ignore. Uh, come on, Steve. what what if what if Nadella started yelling "Developers, developers, well, developers"? Well, you, you'd right. love it, Paul. Really? Would you? Wouldn't mm. you? I would. <laughs> <laughs> would I? I would. Oh. It would be a nod oh. to, like, you know, hey, we're, we're still involved. All right. Well, I'm. I'm. I, I. I have to think he would do it ironically. I mean. I don't we'll, think we'll, jump. we'll cross that bridge when it comes. I, <laughs> I cannot see <laughs> Sacha. I, I, I'm not I'm saying you're hopping around on the stage. No, doing uh, high fives. Yeah, no, no, I don't. I'm just, maybe. I don't think. Maybe. I can't wait to see uh, Bomber's first Clippers game. Oh, I know. That's going to be crazy, right? Is he going to? Sports Center is already awesome enough, but they're going to have like top 10 Bomber moments <laughs> yeah, now. They in are. Sports Center. I could see Steve throwing a chair on the court. I can yep. see Steve running on the court and hugging a player. The best day is going to be when they play the Mavericks and him and Mark Cuban can oh. go at it. That's oh, going to be the best. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Just let me throw beer at each other. It's going to be yeah. awesome. It's I can't wait. It's like yeah. It's going to be watch, like watching monkeys fight in a cage <laughs> at the zoo, you know. Hey, we're going to do the back of the book in just a second. We've got tips, tools, tricks and beer all waiting for you, but first a word from Squarespace, the secret behind some of the best websites in the world, including our own Inside Twit blog. Squarespace is a hosting platform, so they host your site, but they also do the software that sits on top of your site to give you an amazing experience, uh, second to none. Your site will never go down, which is awesome. It's everything you need. They start with uh, 25 templates. Now, first of all, it, it, that's a that's not really the right word for what you're starting with. It's just a starting point. You completely get to make it your own. But the beauty of these templates is all of the hard work behind the scenes has been done. Mobile responsive, so they look great on all size screens. E-commerce in every one of them. State-of-the-art HTML5, CSS, it's the best. These guys know what they're doing. If you should run into a problem, their customer service is the best and it's not outsourced. It's from their offices in Squarespace uh, headquarters in New York City. So it's really great. Complete analytics. They have uh, apps for tablets and phones that make it easy to post, to measure analytics. They even have a little app on the website that you can use to design your, uh, your uh, logo. Great for photographers. Uh, they have an app, a portfolio app, that lets you pull the pictures from your site to present them to your client. I mean, it, it just, I could just go on and on. It is a, but here's the thing. You can try it free. You don't have to listen to me. Just visit squarespace.com. Click the get started button. You've got two weeks free. You don't have to give them a credit card. You don't have to pay them anything. If at the end of the two weeks you say, you know what, this is pretty good. By the way, you can completely import all your data. You could every day, you can have a different template and then some. But if you decide to buy, use our offer code Windows, you'll get 10% off. And that makes it very affordable, Eight as little as $8 a month, including a free domain name when you sign up for a year. Squarespace.com. Just do me a favor. Click that little Get Started button and try it today. I think you're going to like it. If you decide to buy, use the offer code Windows. Squarespace is a better place for your next website. Paul Therat has our tip of the week. Paulie? So today I just have two software picks. Okay. Um, tip. So uh, Skype for Windows Phone got a pretty major update today. Um, three new things in there. Um, the big one is location sharing. And so this works via a Bing map. And so sometimes people will be communicating on, on Skype on the go and they want to say, you know, meet me at the whatever or where are you, that type of thing like you would do on a phone. And this gives you a, a way from right inside the app to pinpoint your location for the other person as a Bing map, and then they can use that to get to you. 
Um, and so that's kind of a cool deal. And then the other two aren't, aren't huge, huge deals, but um, picture, uh, sh sorry, picture, sh <laughs> I want to say sharing, picture saving, meaning that if someone shares a photo with you, you can, you can save it to your save, uh, save photos or save pictures folder, I guess it's called. And then chat notification management, meaning that um, if you're in a chat with someone and you're not in the app, typically you'll get those uh, toast notifications at the top of the screen that can get annoying. And so if you want to turn off the chat notifications, on a chat by chat basis, um, you can do so now in Windows Phone. And so that's for Windows Phone 8.0 8 and 8.1. You can get it at the Windows Phone store. Um, the other one is kind of a fun one. You know, um, as Microsoft has kind of moved Windows forward, um, they've taken away some of the arrow effects that we used to get in Windows 7. And so Windows 8 has, you know, flat windows. They got rid of the, um, the window shadows and that kind of thing. And there's some people hope they'll bring some of that back in Windows 9. I don't know about that. But... Um, our friends over at Stardock have created a new $5 utility called ShadowFX, which brings shadows back to Windows 8. But it actually uh, does more than that. It makes shadows even better. And so you can have um, colored shadows like red or blue or green or whatever. And you can have shadows that are bright and vibrant or white kind of misty type shadows. And they can emphasize um, in ways that weren't possible even when we had shadows, um, which window is at the forefront in a way that is actually visually kind of excellent. And so um, I grabbed this one this morning. I don't really, it's funny, I never really miss the shadows, but I wanted to check this out. I like Brad and all their stuff. And um, I was looking at this and I was like, this is actually kind of a cool utility. And if you're not sure if you want it, you can trial it for free for 30 days. Um, so you can find that one over at uh, stardock.com. It's $5 probably, right? Five bucks, yeah. Five bucks, yeah. They're smart. Five dollars. Where's my five dollars? Yeah. <laughs> That's a, they're smart because it's yeah. not, I mean, yep. it's just shadows. <laughs> yep. It's, not, it's, it's not. just shadows, but it's also just five dollars. Yeah. So yep. you, you get the best of both worlds. <laughs> you, pay, you pay a little money for shadows. Um, right. Enterprise pick of the week. Let's delve into that with Mary Jo Foley. Ooh, nice segue there. Ooh. Delve <laughs> is the enterprise pick of the week. And so Delve, we've talked about it on the show a couple of times. What it is, is it's kind of like Flipboard for Office 365. So you see all these cards as the interface. I have a picture um, if you want to see what it looks like on my site. And um, it brings together all the different people and documents and relationships that you have and that you give it authorization to see. So say somebody sends you something and you save it in OneDrive, somebody sends you something, you save it on your PC, then you're in a meeting and you're like, oh, where did I save that? Delve find, goes out, finds it, and brings it all together in a really cleaner, easier way for you to find. So the reason it's the pick this week is Microsoft's now starting to roll it out for Office 365 users. So almost everybody who has an Office 365 business plan, not the home or the oh, personal, I don't get it. You, it, oh. you do not get it oh. unless you have small business or small no, business premium yeah. or the E, the A, the G. Every, pretty much everybody who has a business plan is going to get this by uh, the start of 2015. The people who will get it first are those who are in the first release program because they've elected to try stuff out early. Uh, then the big plans will get it, the E, the A, and the G, the academic plans. And then finally, small business, small business premium. Uh, so it's starting to roll out as of this week, and it's going to take them a few months, but you're going to start seeing Delve if you're an Office 365 user on the business plans. Wow. That's a cool idea. And it does it all automatically. Yeah. It just it yep. pulls it all in. Yep. That's a good idea. Very cool. Uh, yep. Your, uh, what is it, code name? Are we code yeah, naming? Yeah, code name. Or code naming. So this was a really awesome little find I had before Microsoft pulled it off the web. Um, <laughs> somebody, one of their partners, accidentally or didn't know he shouldn't have done this, he dumped all their code names for the next two or three releases of CRM onto the web. Wow. Uh, yeah, nice. he posted a roadmap slide that has like, here's what we're going to do this fall, and here's what we're going to do in the spring of next year. And so there's, I called it Codename Palooza. There's so <laughs> many code names here. I mean, there's like eight new dynamic CRM co code names. Uh, the, the big one to know in the immediate term, if you're a Microsoft CRM customer, is Vega. And so they're using Constellation code names right now as their theme. And Vega is the next major release of CRM uh, on-prem and CRM online both. It's going to be coming in the fall of this year, according to this roadmap. It's going to support 29 new languages and supposedly support, quote, any device. Uh, so they're really taking that whole cloud-first, mobile-first thing another step with CRM. 
Uh, the other interesting thing I saw is they're adding Power BI into a CRM web client as part of this release too. So if you're if you're into dynamic CRM uh, and you want to see what's coming, go and, check out that slide. And who isn't? And who isn't? <laughs> I agree. Yep. Uh, yeah. Libra, yep. Vega, Hydra, Electra. I know Phoenix, so many good ones. Karina, Corvus, Spica, and Taurus. Yep. That's amazing. Well, it doesn't matter if the code names leak out. The roadmap might be more important than that. Yeah, at the end, I've got a second slide from the roadmap that lists all, like features coming that also wasn't supposed to be on the web. But boom, luckily, little snap, snag it, snapped it right up. <laughs> Nothing like it. Nothing like Let's it. Let's do some beer. Yeah. My beer pick of the week. So I haven't done an IPA in a while. Um, and I'm going to do a pretty nicely hopped one this time. It's from Ballast Point. <coughs> Sorry. Sorry. And I'm by the way, a, the, the beer advocate is doing the uh, internet slowdown. Oh, thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Yep. So uh, Ballast Point Grapefruit Sculpin IPA. So Ballast Point makes this really awesome basic IPA called Sculpin. And now they've got one that has even more grapefruit. So when I drank <laughs> this, I was like, wow. It's like having one of your fruit servings in a beer. <laughs> now with beer more grapefruit. <laughs> it is. It's so good. It's so delicious. Um <laughs> Yeah, they, they make really great IPA, basic a basic good IPA, 7% or so. Uh, but this one just takes it up a notch if you're somebody who likes the grapefruit. I don't know if Paul would like that one. Probably not. Are you a grapefruit guy? <laughs> Actually, hoppy the hoppy grapefruit thing is clearly a natural byproduct of whatever <laughs> ingredients are in there because that's pretty common. I like that kind of thing. It is. The, um, yep. Yep. the uh, quarter mile IPA from my favorite brewery is like that. It's got a real mm -hmm. citrusy. Yeah, I love the going. citrus. Yeah, yes. I like that a lot. It's tangy. Tangy. Yeah. Tangy. Yeah. yeah. Alice Point Brewing Company, Grapefruit Sculpin IPA. Huh. Mary Jo Foley is at a Microsoft, all about Microsoft.com, the ZDNet blog site, and uh, posts all the time. If you want to keep up on what's happening with Windows, you got to read Mary Jo, all about Microsoft.com. Paul Therott, if you want to know how to use Windows, what's the inside scoop, he's got that. At the super site for Windows, winsupersite.com. And of course, his books too. You'll find a list and links to all of them at windows81book.com. I need to write a Call of Duty field guide. The field <laughs> oh, guide to Call of Duty. <laughs> How to get the dog. <laughs> Chapter two. <laughs> Dogs are your man's best friend. Dogs are man's best friend. A lot of games now, you have a companion. Mm -hmm. Destiny, you've got a little... You notice Destiny has the same uh, kind of companion you used to have in Halo. Well, not a companion. Kind of. like the enemy. Same the idea. same sort of little, little intelligent thing. floating soccer ball thing. Yeah. Follows yeah. you around. It's convenient. It's called the exposition yeah. cube. Yes. Yes. <laughs> That's what it should be called, yeah. It's very useful. <laughs> <laughs> I need one of those. Storyline bot. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Over here, quick. Walk over here. <laughs> Let me tell you why you're shooting these people. I don't need to know. Thank you. I just need to shoot them. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you know that this is an alien race that's taking over the world, right? Yeah, yeah whatever. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> Nazis, you know, aliens, yeah, yeah, no, zombies, really I don't care. Give me a gun. <laughs> is there, are there grenades? <laughs> Not yet. Uh, that's in the future. You know, it, they really did a disservice to people because the ads make it look like Starship Troopers. Yeah. And it's not. It's a game. It's a shoot 'em up. It's a first person shooter. But the ads. Well, it's, it's a like, first person shooter, but it's also kind of a. It's a. It's like an RPG light as well. It's, right. Uh, there's a little RPG, and it, and there's yeah. certainly online, uh, you know, gaming and. Oh yeah. Uh, you can't leave the thing sitting there. That's the thing. Actually. Oh really? That's my big complaint. Well, because it's an online game. Yeah. Sometimes really. I'd like to get up and pee. But right. But then you God come forbid, back and you're you know? dead. Yep. And you come back and it's no, it's it, you've just signed out. Yeah. Your and friends if you made say any, loser. You. You lose progress. Yeah, you know it's yeah. not. Yeah, I don't like that. No, I had that problem with the um, with the beta because um, I wasn't. I didn't really want to play all the time. <laughs> Leo, <laughs> seriously, what is wrong with you? <laughs> uh, do you? Do you need to go to a doctor? Yeah, I, yeah. Thank you for joining us. We do Windows Weekly Wednesdays uh, about 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1800 UTC. Please tune in. Watch live. By the way, yes. Can I do something I've never done? Please. 
Can I make a uh, podcast title suggestion? Ah, I'm writing it down right now. This is uh, from Stephen Sandhoff on Twitter. Yes. And he, he said this much earlier in the show, but he said, you should call it Snarknado. <laughs> <laughs> a deal. Deal, deal, deal. Actually, every, was, every episode I that, I know. is Snarknado. I thought that was pretty good. <laughs> I was just going to call it Udon Noodles, but maybe Snarknado. Right. <laughs> That's good, too. Thank you for being here. We do make on-demand audio and video available at our website, twit.tv slash dub dub. But you can also get it online, you know, use the podcast app or go to uh, the Xbox Music Store or iTunes or wherever you get your shows. And we'll be there. Just look for Windows Weekly. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Mary Jo. We'll see you next time. <laughs>